Folks, we are here at All Things Aquatic KC, which is owned by my friend John over there, and I have my brother with me. Today we have the CV Fabrication Intercooler, and it is a thick boy. Uh, maybe put a little more pep in its step, maybe hold some boost a little bit longer than what it does stock. Um, so the factory, the factory intercooler is down below, not like the Explorer where we got to take the entire front end apart to get it. Um, this intercooler should actually come out of the bottom of the uh, Bronco. So the biggest part's probably gonna be getting the bumper off of it. So we'll tear into it, see what's good. Okay, so we're gonna do our best to make the install video for CV Fab uh, with their intercooler. And let's start just by talking about what tools that we're gonna be using. Um, and I think my brother and John have a bunch of tools kind of laid out here of what they're gonna be using, but what, what's the first step? What are you gonna be doing to get this intercooler installed? First thing we're gonna do is take off the skid pan and those are gonna be a 15 millimeter. 15 and millimeter. We'll start there and kind of work our way through it as we go. All right, here we go. I don't think it's going to come out. The only problem is these shutters, because I don't think the shutters will clear with the new one. No, the shutters have to be removed with uh, oh, any aftermarket yeah. intercooler oh. right now. So there's a cover here. I have these push tabs covering up. Yep. And it looks like there's three bolts on each side. Okay. I'll grab a tab. Okay, so cover the shield is held on by these push tabs, which are actually okay. kind of cool. You don't actually need a tool. Oh, yeah. You know, if you got somewhat beefy fingers. That's nice. Uh, T40. Yeah. Where do we want to put these? Tabs. Getting the tabs pulled out. Going to remove the bumper. That way, get that off. Intercooler drop. We can take those. Um, if you pay attention, you can see these fins in here and those have to be removed when doing the intercooler install to make it fit. What size were those? That you guys, 15s. So we do indeed have to take the tow hooks off. It's part of the bumper assembly. Oh, it's all one. And we're... We're just doing this as we go. It's not like well, we've never done this before, so um, everything's just kind of a guessing game, but we're doing okay. I think these are eights. Okay. Eights. Eights and a trade gear 13. Ooh. I've made it. The bumper is off. They've gotten to the actual, the shutter portion of the intercooler. Intercooler's hiding right behind that. So once that comes out, we'll get a comparison of the CV Fab versus the factory OEM intercooler. Millimeters. Those are eight. Eight millimeter holds these on, little bitty ones. Go pull tab there. Nice. There go the shutters. The video that we and there's the factory intercooler. That guy didn't take. He didn't disconnect it. Going back to 15 millimeter. Um, they look like 15s or 13s. Yeah, they're 15s. What did you do with the 15? Right here? Okay. Just use this one. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I definitely. That, was it. I can't remember if it was the Explorer. That we, but it definitely makes it. That's supported by the top mounts, I think. Okay. There you go. Now the intercooler is going to hang. Yeah, go ahead. Pull that off. I love that Ford went to this style of snap ring. Dude, it's so freaking nice. Until you make power and you got to get rid of them. And my God, there she is. That was as simple as it could be. Get this factory on it. Yeah, it is. It's nice looking. Yeah, they normally do. Look at the difference between the CV Fab intercooler versus the old factory OEM intercooler here. Holy thick boy. I love it. Okay, factory intercooler. Don't forget that the bushings have to be swapped onto the new intercooler. Take all the bushings off your factory OEM and put them on the new one. Wait, mine goes this way. Is this yours? Mine. They got locators on them. So that one's... So they're actually going to install this intercooler with those factory um, inlets and outlets right there. 
um, and just to show you how it all goes back on. But what we are going to do right, so yeah, is we'll, we'll be replacing all these pipes the with the hot and cold side pipes, but we're gonna at least show you how it gets back on there. Bolts ready? Do you have your bolts over there, Johnny? I gave them to you. There you go. And, uh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, just put it in the middle. Ooh. She's gonna main, maintain some boost after this. Uh, the factory piping, everything bolted right up. Looks really good. Perfect. Now we're gonna be, like I said earlier, we're gonna be replacing all this piping with CV Fabrications, hot and cold side piping. Really not too big of a deal. What would you say, um, if you had to do this again, you could probably have that whole front end off and 10, 15 minutes, don't you think? Yeah, two people, 10 minutes, yeah, easily. So well, explain that bracket right there, John, that you put on. So this would hold your adaptive cruise because this is a radar module to do adaptive cruise on Fords. Mm -hmm. But this Bronco doesn't have adaptive cruise, so there's no module here to do anything. But anyways, we're gonna bolt it in like it's supposed to be. Sports cruise, one, two, three, four. And then, like I said, if you had a fancier Sasquatch or something with adaptive cruise, you'd be Nice. There. So this is just a black diamond, no adaptive crews, kind of helped us out in this scenario. Um, but yeah, that it does have a bracket. You put that bracket on, which would hold your adaptive cruise radar. Um, and so for now, we're going to just zip tie that shutter motor on top of there. It'll be just fine. But yeah, that explains that bracket right there. All right, folks, it is time to put the bumper back on. Hey, how much do you think that bumper weighs? Seriously. I mean, for a guy your size, it's probably 124 and almost. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that they put a factory bumper on this stout. I mean, honestly. Tyler, give us some bolts. What you need? So That's since also since this Bronco doesn't have that adaptive cruise or whatever, we just went ahead. We installed that bracket just to make sure you guys knew um, where it went and how it went on. But we went ahead and took it back off just because this one doesn't have the adaptive cruise. Plus, I really like how you'll be able to see the intercooler kind of peeking through that lower bumper there. I really like that a lot. Just wrapping up and getting the bumper put back on. Nice and level. See that intercooler poking through there? Beautiful. All right, this is basically the last part of it, putting that skid plate right back on. The intercooler looks good. You can see it just kind of poking through there and that's gonna look really good. I Aesthetically pleasing for, for me. If you folks that are seeing this are in Kansas City and you have one of these Broncos, um, and you're needing some of these installs done, check out that sign up there. This is All Things Aquatic KC. John Kane owns this business, and he will get you taken care of when it comes to your Bronco. What else do you do, John? Uh, anything audio related will do it. If you already have an audio system and you want to make it even better, we can do that too. We do a lot of DSP and microphone tuning, and we utilize the JL Max system. And any high-end audio stuff, we're here for you. We've done a uh, first edition Bronco, we did a whole Blam Helix, and, uh, matted the whole thing, tops, everything, and it's quiet. So I already know the problems you guys have with Broncos and I'm ready to fix them with you. So. The stereo, let me tell you, to be honest with you, the stereo in this Bronco, the worst factory stereo I've ever heard, you know? But it, it, anything from, from this truck to a Ford Bronco, all things aquatic KC, May, even your boat. Let's talk about the aquatic name in the sign, your yeah. boat. He does work on boats too. Yeah, we actually do boats mostly, but we'll do some higher end stuff as you can see. So yeah, we're ready to help.